14, assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the molar solubility of each of the following from its solubility product. So we have to find out what the molar solubility of a calcium oxalate a hydrate, which is CaC2O4H2O is, from its solubility product. And remember, the solubility product is just a KSP, SP, solubility product. So I had to go in the back of the textbook to get what the KSP value is of CaC2O4H2O. That's 1.96 times 10 to the negative eighth. Okay. But when we have a KSP, we got to have a balanced equation. So that's the next thing that we're going to write. Keep in mind that when we're dealing with solubilities and solubility products, that means that whatever the ionic compound that you're starting with is going to dissociate dissolution into its ions at equilibrium. So that means that this compound is going to be a solid um, at the beginning. Now this one is a little tricky because they gave it to you in a hydrate form. But remember, the water is just kind of part of the solvent. This is the actual I or, um, ionic compound that we care about. That's going to actually dissolve into the two ions. So for our balanced equation, we only have to take this portion of the hydrate because the water is just kind of like the solvent, right? That's not going to break down into the ions. So we have Ca, C2, O4, and that's going to start as a solid. This is going to come to equilibrium, so I need to use double arrows. And now I just need my two ions, right? But I notice that I have a polyatomic here. C2O4 is oxalate, and polyatomics always stick together. So the break would have to be between the calcium and the C2O4. So I have Ca plus C2O4. But now the thing is, is what is those charges in the upper right-hand corner, right? Because dissolution, you're going to dissolve into your ions. And every time you have an ion, that's always going to be a charge. Well, we could do it based off of the periodic table. Keep in mind that calcium is in group two on the periodic table. And all group two elements love to be plus two charges. And now we say to ourselves, okay, if I have one calcium and one oxalate, if the calcium was a plus two, what would the C2O4 have to be to kind of balance it out, to bring the charge to zero? Yeah, the whole thing would have to be a minus two. And you can always look back to see, is this the correct charge for oxalate? And the answer is yes. So now since I have charges, these are aqueous and aqueous. We just got to make sure it's balanced. But I got one calcium, one calcium. I got one oxalate, C2O4, one C2O4. So we're good. So I'm just going to put this to the side for now. But I'm going to use it to make my KSP equation. Remember, the general formula for KSP is this right here. It's just equal to the concentration of the products raised to their coefficients. No reactants because they're solids. Remember, no solids are allowed in any K expression. So here I have KSP equal to uh, Ca2 plus times the C2O4. And just double check on those coefficients because you do have to always raise them to the coefficients, the big numbers in the front. But since for both of these, there was only one, of each, I could raise them both to the first power, but anything raised to the first is itself, so I don't even care about that. The KSP we took from the back of the book is 1.96 times 10 to the negative eighth, but the thing is that I don't know what these concentrations are. Well, that's when we're gonna use variables. So we're going back to the balanced equation to say, okay, I don't know what the concentration of calcium two plus is at equilibrium, so I'm just going to label it as X, but it just has to go with the coefficient. Technically, this would be a one times X, but one times X is just X. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And since it's a one to one ratio, that means that whatever this concentration is, it has to be the same as this. So it also would be X. And it makes sense because it just follows the coefficient. One times X is itself. So I'm going to use these two values for my concentrations. So that means that this is going to be plugged in as X, 
this is going to be plugged in as x. So I got 1.96 times 10 to the negative eighth equals the two values. I have x times x, but x times x is just x squared, right? And then just solve for x. x squared, the inverse is doing the square root, so this one's pretty easy. We love these one-step math problems. So x equals, what do we got? Square root of 1.96 times 10 to the negative eighth. I get 1.4. I guess three sig figs if we want it, right? 1.4 times 10 to the, I guess we'll say 1.40, right? 1.40 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's in molarity, because we're dealing with concentration. But remember, molar solubility, molar solubility is always just asking for the original compound. So in this case, it would be the CaC2O4, dot, uh, the hydrate, right? but we could use it as the ratios. First, just know that anytime that you have a KSP, the compound that you have in the beginning, there's only gonna be one of them. So this could be basically a one X. And since the coefficients match, that means that this is going to be the molarity for your initial ionic compound. And since there was only one of this ionic compound, with the whole one hydrate, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so they're all equal to each other. So I can just say that this would be 1.40 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity of the CaC2O4.H2O. And that is the final answer. Whoopee. Okay. So. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. That will help us out tremendously. And I thank you so much for that. Keep studying hard. Good luck with your tests and quizzes. And I will talk to you all later. Okay. Bye-bye.